This video was made possible by the EA Creator Network. I built the mansion from the X-Men in The Sims 4. This is part of a new Marvel-themed save file that I've started. This mansion is a school for young mutants and the X-Men's base of operations, and it's the first build of this new save file. I drew inspiration from lots of different X-Men media, including the comic books, the various cartoons, and the movies. The ground level of the mansion is where all all the classrooms are held. There's a debate room, a math room, a computer lab, and a room for the students to experiment with their mutant powers in a safe environment. There's also a music room and an art room and this really big library that doubles as a study hall. And the secret door in the bookcase goes into the basement where all the X-Men stuff is. There's also the science lab. Of course, Beast is the science teacher and Professor Xavier's office where he teaches a class as well. Probably literature or history. There's also a dining room and one of the largest kitchens that I've ever built in The Sims. And there's also a greenhouse on the first floor where I imagine Storm probably teaches a gardening class. Out in the backyard is a pool and a basketball court and a few chess tables and also a grill and a couple of picnic tables. And there are a lot of stairs in this mansion. And yes, Charles Xavier is in a wheelchair, but The Sims 4 doesn't have wheelchairs or really functional elevators and the professor's wheelchair is actually a hover chair and it can traverse stairs no problem it happens all the time in the cartoons and the comics the main hall on the second floor is student dorms and there's a girl's side and a boy's side with restrooms for each side. On the girl's side, we have Jubilee's room and a room for Shadow Cat, AKA Kate or Kitty Pride. The cat bed and cage are for her pet dragon. This room is for Boom Boom from X-Men Evolution. And this room is for Wolverine's clone, Laura, AKA X-23. And on the boy's side, I have side-by-side -side rooms for Iceman and Pyro, so they can have that rivalry they had in the first X-Men movie. We got a room for Havoc, Cyclops' little brother, and a room for Storm's nephew, Spike, from X-Men Evolution. And at the other end of the hall are a couple of the X-Men's bedrooms. These are the X-Men that watch over the student dorms. The first is Colossus, who I imagine has a broken mirror because he got a little too close to it in his metal form and accidentally shattered it. And across the hall from Colossus is Wolverine. And his room has a lot of lore in it, like the little single bed from that meme where he's looking at the photo. It's a photo of Jean, by the way, and it's right next to his bed. There's also claw marks on the wall because he has nightmares and thrashes in his sleep and suitcases because he's always running off to do something on his own. He's also just down the hall from Jean and Cyclops. This is another room with a lot of lore in it, and I call this chair in the corner the Wolverine chair. If you know, you know. When the lights are out, you can't even tell he's there, except for the glow of his cigar. Also in this wing of the mansion is Charles Xavier's bedroom, which is the master suite, but it's not the largest bedroom in the house. Charles has a walk-in closet and a really nice accessible bathroom with handrails and a seat in the shower and a toilet with a bidet. And if you go down these stairs off of Charles's bedroom, that leads right back into his office. But instead of going down the stairs, let's go to the other wing of the second floor, where we have bedrooms for more of the X-Men, starting with Rogue. Her room is green and yellow, like her uniform from the cartoons. She also has a private balcony because in the comics and cartoons, she can fly, and she's often shown coming and going via the balcony. Rogue also has an ensuite bathroom and a walk-in closet with a ton of shoes. Because I feel like she would have a ton of shoes. Next is Nightcrawler's room, and he just moved in. He hasn't even removed the sheets from the furniture yet. Next door to Nightcrawler is Morph, who recently came out as non-binary. And they have a yellow and blue bedroom to match their uniform. And there's also a bedroom for Gambit. It's pink and black and brown to match his uniform. And of course, you know I had to put a card table in his room and Gambit, Nightcrawler, and Morph share this bathroom. And in the central area of the third floor are guest rooms. These are for characters who aren't necessarily X-Men, but might stay at the mansion for one reason or another. This first guest room is for Archangel, who's still trying to reverse what Apocalypse did to him. And there's a room for Doctor Strange. And on his desk is the Time Stone and his watch. And this yellow circle on the wall is one of his portals. Maybe he just left and this is the 
portal closing behind him. Next is a room for Emma Frost, who's a villain most of the time, but sometimes she's a member of the X-Men. And I put some diamonds in here as a callback to her powers. And there's a room for Bishop, our time-traveling X-Men from the future, who visits so often he has his own room. And I put photos of his wife and son next to his bed. And Magneto does not have a room in this mansion, but some of his children do, like Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, and her twin brother Pietro, aka Quicksilver, and their little sister Polaris, who has her father's power over magnetism. Why doesn't Magneto have a room? Because if he's here, that means Charles isn't, so he's in the master suite. Next is a room for Cable, who, like Bishop, is a time traveler from the future. But he's a lot more militant than Bishop, and he doesn't visit quite as often. And then there's a room for Spider-Man, who we're going to say is probably college age. There's a photo of a girl, maybe it's MJ, or Mary Jane Watson, or Gwen Stacy. And there's also a book bag and a camera. And next door to Spider-Man, I had to put Deadpool. There's a unicorn and some posters in this room, as well as a giant eggplant, and also a couple of swords. Hank McCoy, aka Beast, gets his own wing of the third floor. There's a really nice laboratory for him to use, and a beam that he can hang upside down from while using the invention constructor. Hank's bedroom is right here by the lab. There's a bookcase in here and wooden beams on the ceiling for him to hang onto with his feet and hang upside down. And as Hank is a doctor, this is also the hospital wing of the mansion, where wounded or sick X-Men can receive treatment and recover under the care of Dr. Hank McCoy. And on the opposite wing of Beast is Storm's area, and she actually has a larger area than anyone else in the mansion, partly because of this attic greenhouse that she has, with a skylight that she's often seen flying in and out of in the comics and the cartoons. And if we go back down to the first floor and go through the secret bookcase door, that takes us to the basement where all of the X-Men stuff is. There's mannequins down here for storing their uniforms, as well as the war room with a holographic table that's in just about every episode of the 90s cartoon. There's a hangar down here for their stealth jet, the Blackbird, and some holding cells in case they need to detain a combative mutant. This big room with crates in it is the Danger Room, where the X-Men train, and here's the Danger Room's control room, as seen in the cartoons. And finally, we have Cerebro, a supercomputer that enhances Charles Xavier's telepathic powers. In the cartoon in the 90s, Cerebro is just a helmet in the war room, but I like the way Cerebro was designed for the movies a lot more, so that's what I went with here. That's the entire build. It's available to download right now on the gallery. My gallery ID is Jeremy underscore gone wild. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.